Today, I got more subscriber hacks for you. Proving once more that the smartest people on YouTube watch fishing stuff. Anyway, let's get on with these hacks. Wait, wait, wait. I got a joke to tell. Oh my fr- You know I'm the star of this show. Just hurry up and tell you jokes. Why are fish so smart? I don't know. Because they swim in schools. Why do fish swim in schools? To be smart. Because they can't walk. Oh. On with the hacks, on with the hacks. Fishing hack number one. Now we've all lost a rod at one point or another. Maybe a fish just jerked it in the water. Let me tease, let me tease one. Oh my god. Oh, jump in, jump in. Being a guide, one thing you gotta be is a rod recovery specialist. People do a lot of stupid shit. Or maybe you just threw it in the water. <laughs> I've actually done that before. I have a buddy named Chris Souders, and he has a YouTube channel too. He was actually throwing a cast net and trying to catch bait, and his cast net grabs onto one of his rods, and he throws that thing in the lake. Yeah. Well, I just lost a rod. Fortunately, he got that rod back by throwing this cast net in on top of it and pulling it back in the boat. Hey, we got it. Now you want to talk about luck, son. Look at there. But one of my subscribers had a pretty good idea. This, as most of you probably know, is a stringer for keeping fish on. It's the kind that's got the little jaws you open up, put through their gill then close it back. Well, if you open all of these little hooks, kinda like this right here, it gives you this medieval looking device <laughs> that greatly increase your odds of finding your rod. You just tie the end right here to a string on a fishing rod. Then you can cast this thing in the water and you're most likely going to find that rod if you throw it across it. I mean, it is a lot better than just having one hook trying to get a rod back. That's all I'm saying. It's actually a pretty good idea. Fishing hack number two. I picked up these pliers off of Amazon and they're really kind of cool. They wasn't too expensive. I just found them interesting. I've been playing around with them trying to do different things, but one of my subscribers he actually posted an idea that I showed years ago, but I'm gonna show it again. You take you a piece of stainless steel wire, you see this clamp right here and over here, and then you see this little shaft sticking out. Well, when you close these pliers, they close around that shaft. You see what I'm saying? What they do is make a little eye on the end of your wire. They're actually for jewelry making, but if you use stiff enough wire, like this stainless steel weld wire right here, you can use it for fishing too. So what you want to do is stick your wire across the top of this and the top of this. You get in there like that. You don't want it sticking over because it's going to hit this hook right here. You get it in there like that. Then you start to close it and it'll wrap around that little shaft. Once you get it wrapped around that little shaft and you pull it out, you'll have yourself an eye on the end of your wire. Just like this right here. Now, since we're making a dragon weight, kind of like one of these dragon weights, I've got several videos on making dragon weights. But once you get your wire cut, the length that you want it, you decide how much weight you want on it. And you can use like one of these no rolls. You could use egg sinkers or a egg sinker, either one. But you slide your weights up onto the wire. You want it kind of up off the bottom a few inches. Once you get your weights where you want them, you put a 45 degree bend in your wire and then another 45 degree bend in your wire so that it's straight when you're finished. So basically when you're done, you got your little eye right here, got your sinkers on it, and you got two 45 degree bends, if you can see that, right there on your wire. You don't want no crazy aggressive bends. You just want to bend this thing where it stays straight. So now when you pull it, it's going to drag across the bottom really easy because you'll have a float holding it up. I got a video all about floats and how dragging works if you're interested. But when you're dragging this thing, if one of these weights do happen to get hung up, the weight itself will just pull off of this thing. And these things won't come off easy, but they will come off. Push them hard enough. 
So basically then you'll lose your weight and save your rig. And that's the whole point of this type of dragon weight. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. Hack number three. Now this is the back of my trailer. Just in case you didn't know what you was looking at. This right here is a license plate holder. You see how close that thing is to the ground? I mean, it almost touches the ground. When you're backing down the ramp sometimes, run into those little concrete shoulders or whatever and you hit something and break this thing off because it ain't nothing but plastic well i got this right here at harbor freight it's just a piece of rubber that looks like diamond plate and it's got a sticky back on it it's basically like this rubber right here on my trailer that helps you keep your grip so you don't fall off the trailer. This piece of rubber is flexible so you can stick it to your trailer like this, but we're not going to stick it to our trailer. What I'm going to do is cut this rubber right in half. Then I'm going to take the paper off of the sticky back and stick these together. After I get them stuck together, I can trim them down to any shape that I want. Then we can drill some holes through our rubber, and we can bolt this rubber to our license plate. We're just making us a new bracket out of rubber. Now all you have to do is replace this little plastic bracket right here, and we'll bolt our rubber one to our trailer. But I actually ain't bolting this to my trailer because this ain't my tag, so... Anyway, if you back your trailer up and you happen to hit something with this now, it's just going to flex. You know what I'm saying? It'll just knock your tag out of the way and you won't lose it. This hack right here also came from one of my subscribers. I'm just saying. <coughs> I just swallowed a fish bone. Are you choking? No, I'm serious. What's the easiest way to catch a fish? Have someone throw it to you. You fired. I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying. Fishing hack number four. Now, this next hack it really ain't a hack, but it's really freaking cool. Companies try to send me stuff all the time, and normally I'm like, no. No. No, 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 no. But I will let them send something occasionally if it looks cool enough. These look cool enough, and after testing them, they are very cool. Especially this right here. This right here, it kind of just blew my mind. That's the only way I can say it. So, let's start with this one. All of these flashlights are made by a company called Woobin. Woobin. Am I saying that right? Woobin? I guess. They talk kind of like me. It tells you right here on the side, it's got an 1100 milliamp battery. This thing has like five different settings. Let's try it. One, two, three, four. This thing's got six different settings. And as tiny as this thing is, the highest setting is 1100 lumens. You heard me right. 1100 lumens lumens that's kind of crazy for such a small light but the low setting's called moonlight mode and in moonlight mode this flashlight lasts 130 hours that's pretty cool if you lift up the switch you can see right there where you plug your charger in it takes an hour and a half to charge it and it has a magnet on the bottom which you can probably tell so if you're working on something you can stick it to something metal and it'll just hang there it also has this little clip on the back you could clip this onto your hat bill and the light shines straight down so if you're tying a knot or something you can see what you're doing but i think what this clip's meant for is to like clip it on the front of a book bag strap so when you're hiking or something you don't have to hold the flashlight let's see what this thing looks like in the dark okay that's the lowest setting that's moonlight mode shine on this wall you can still see with it i mean if you're fishing that won't kill your night vision here's the next setting yeah that's a little bit brighter look around the shop mm, can't see much try the next one. Oh, there we go getting brighter now next setting that's pretty bright for such a little flashlight but you know the crazy thing is that ain't the brightest setting it's got a turbo mode that's the brightest setting that is 1100 lumens out of this little bitty tiny flashlight that's actually pretty dang cool now next up we got this x3 made by a woman 
made by Wubin. They probably gonna get mad at me, but I kind of like saying that, Wubin. But what this flashlight is, it has a case that it comes in, and the case keeps the light protected, of course. But something else this case does is it charges the flashlight. So after you use it, you can just stick it back in the case, and it'll charge this flashlight back up for you. The light itself is pretty impressive. It's actually got this little LED screen, and you turn it on, it tells you how many lumens it's using. It's using one lumen right now. It's also got a little battery indicator and it tells you how much battery you got left and you just hold it down and it goes through the lumens. So this is 50 lumens. Hold it down again, 150 lumens. And of course, this has a turbo mode too. Whoops, I put it in the emergency mode. It's got emergency mode too, people. So what you gotta do is double tap it. Now it's on 700 lumens. That's pretty bright. I'm gonna turn out the lights and see how bright this one is. Okay, I got this thing on one lumen. The little lights inside this thing is probably just as bright as it is. But as you can see, this would be fine for not losing your night vision. Now I'm gonna hold it down and brighten it up some. Okay, that's 50 lumens. Now we'll go up to 150 lumens. Oh yeah, this thing. It's pretty bright. And of course, the turbo setting is 700 lumens. And I did that wrong. Let's see. Yep, that's 700 lumens. I mean, that's gonna work pretty good outside. Now, I've got some O-Light flashlights, and they make a decent product. And I don't bash on companies, but there's something that I don't like about O-Lights, and that is their chargers. Because the charger, you just throw it on there, and it grabs the hole where it's supposed to, and it charges the flashlight. When I seen that, I was like, that is freaking awesome. But I found out real fast, this ain't that cool. Because if you go somewhere fishing, camping, anywhere, you don't remember to bring this right here, you're pretty much screwed. Because there ain't nothing else going to charge this dang flashlight except for this plug. And to me, that kind of limits it. Now, I'm not bashing O-Light, and I'm probably going to get some hate from it. But don't hate the player, hate the game. That's all I'm saying. Seriously, though, the only reason I brought that up, this little light right here, it needs its case to charge. So, let's say we left the case at home. How are we going to charge this thing? We're going to charge this thing with that right there. You know that new technology where you can lay your phone on the charger and it just charges without plugging in it? This thing has it on there, and I tried it, and it works. A couple other things I like about this light. It does have a red light. There it is. It's got a red light, which saves your night vision. Something else that's cool, the red light also has two different lumens, and this head swivels. You can take this head and swivel it all the way around, and now it's a forward-facing flashlight, and it's got a clip on it, just like the other little light, which is pretty dang cool. And if you're working on something, you can stick it to something metal and it'll kind of hold itself up there. You see this little linear right here? You can take this linear out and the linear is actually the cable that you use to charge this thing with. And this little thing right here pulls out the side and it becomes an adapter that you can use with an iPhone. If you turn this head to a front facing flashlight and then you put it in the battery case so it can charge, this case right here acts as a diffuser, spreads the light out everywhere. So if we cut it on now, it turns it into a little night light. So if you're in your tent or something camping, you can see. So this is the light that really impressed me a whole lot. This little light right here, I know what you're saying, that ain't a little light. And it's not light either, because it's made out of like all aluminum. It's made really tough. You see the sides right there and right there? This thing has a waterproof fan in it because this light is so bright. If you turn this thing on turbo mode, the fan kicks on to keep it cool. Now, this light ain't cheap. This light's like 170 bucks or something like that. But this is my favorite flashlight. And you look at the end of it right there and tell I've had it a long time. This is a Streamlight Protect. It's a thousand lumen flashlight and it's rechargeable. Well, this Streamlight, it wasn't cheap either. It was $129 when I bought it. This light right here is like 170 something. I, I, I don't remember. But they give me a code for my subscribers. And if you use it, you get 20% off. And the code is FNS20. 
It stands for Fishing and Stuff 20%. FNS20. If you use that code, it brings this light down to like 140 bucks. Compared to a $130 stream light, there's just no comparison. I'm about to show you the difference between these two lights. Now this is my stream light. It can be adjusted down to, it's a thousand lumens and it has a really far throw on it. This is the Wuben Falcon. That is pretty impressive. It goes through four settings, but when you hit the turbo mode, it's pretty amazing how bright this slide is. That is freaking crazy. I mean, if you put those pictures beside of each other, it's just ridiculous how much brighter this light is. The thing about using flashlights inside of a building, every one of them's gonna look bright. So it's dark right now. I'm gonna run over to my buddy's house. He has a lake. We're gonna shine this flashlight and we're gonna see just how bright it is. All right, I come down to David's. We're gonna shine this flashlight across his pond. Pond's over there somewhere anyway this is a thousand lumen stream light i brought this so we can see how bright that light really is all right stream light it's pretty bright it's kind of impressive now we're going to try this falcon out shining across this pond <laughs> now right. now double tap it Ooh. Dang, that's turbo. I can go coon hunting with this light. <laughs> Dang, it is bad. Man, Look at, he's got a fan in it. <laughs> it gets hot. <laughs> you hear it? Can you hear it? Yeah, I hear it. That's pretty dang cool. Yeah, they'll make this thing illegal. They say that thing will blind a bear. You got any bears? <laughs> no, I hope not. <laughs> the reason I compared these two lights is because they cost the same amount. <laughs> Pretty much. This is a 12,000 lumen flashlight. There is something cool about this light right here that a lot of lights don't have. And that is a five year warranty. Fishing hack number five. So on my last hack video, I, at least I think it was my last hack video, I showed how you could sand your rod handles and make them look new again. See how pretty that is? This up here, not so much. I just took sandpaper and sanded off some rod handles and it actually makes them look new again. But something I used to do back when I used to carp fish when I was young, we used some crazy baits. I actually made a couple of videos of some carp bait that I used to use. Well, most of the carp bait is pretty messy. Like you get syrup on your hands. If you don't wash your hands really good, you end up getting syrup all over your rod handles. I mean, you can wipe it off your reels, but it sinks into your rod handles. Another fishing sport that's messy is catfishing. Catfish. If you catfish, you have blood on your hands a lot. That blood can get into your handles too and mess up your rods. Well, when I carp fished, I used tape like this, and this is called M tape. It's a really tough tape and it's made out of fabric. It's kind of like what they used to put on galls with when you get injured. But this is an athletic tape. You see it says in there M tape. I think it's made by Muller's. Is that what that says? But this M tape comes in all different colors. You can just wrap your rod handles with it. Use it for about two or three months. And when it gets real nice and filthy, you just pull that stuff off and wrap it with some new tape. Well, I had a subscriber that said he used silicone tape, and I thought, well, that's kind of interesting, so let's try that out. And what this is, is it's just plain old silicone. It don't even have a sticky side. It just sticks to itself. Silicone's pretty indestructible. I mean, it's waterproof, it's heatproof, pretty tough stuff. But I wrapped a little bit on this rod, and it really does stick to itself. And I mean, what's crazy is it don't even have a sticky side. And this stuff does not want to come back off. I folded it over and it stuck to itself again. <laughs> Look at it. It don't want to let go. That's kind of interesting and crazy. But I'm going to wrap this rod handle all the way and see what it feels like. This stuff 
is pretty cool actually. I use white which don't really look good with this rod and reel setup but white picks up better on camera so you can see what it looks like better and as far as protection goes I would say this one's going to do way better than the baseball tape. The only thing that's going to give this a run for its money and protection is maybe the rod covers that's heat shrink that you heat up with the heat gun and it covers them. I've had them on my channel before too but the main difference between the heat shrink and this one is this one has an amazing grip because of silicone but when you pick up your rod i mean you get a really good grip from it this could save your rod handle from getting destroyed because we put a lot of money into our equipment nowadays i'm just saying well there you have it some new subscriber fishing hacks that are freaking awesome if you like this video then you should go check out this video because you're probably gonna like it too and if you don't watch this one or this one or this one because you're gonna like one of them i know you are so go on over there and check them out because this video is over it's over people